Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Bahumik Joshi from Aspire MDS and this video is on panoramic imaging. So this panoramic imaging or OPG, orthopentomograph as we call it, is a body section imaging which results in a wide and curved image layer which depicts maxillary and mandibular dental arches and their supporting structures. This is achieved by using a single rotation of X-ray, the X-ray source and the image receptor around the patient's head. The principle for this was given by Patero and Numata independently in 1948 and 1933. Let's see the formation of focal trough in the panoramic machine that is helping us in, form, in getting a panoramic image. So we, let's assume that you want to take radiograph of the objects A, B and C. Now these objects A, B and C are present vertically on this disc. Now if you want to take radiograph of only one object that is A, it is simple. You will use the X-ray source from one side, you will keep the receptor on the other side and when you shoot the image will be covered. But here you want a panorama image. Panorama means you want to cover multiple structures in a wide image. So for that, what the principle for this panoramic imaging also is there. What we can do is we can rotate this disc in this direction that is clockwise direction. So this is the X-ray source, this is the disc with the objects and this is the image receptor. And at this particular point is the collimator. So the X-ray source will come from this side, it will pass through the disc, it will be collimated by the collimator and it will reach this particular image receptor. If this disc now starts rotating, in that case all the objects A, B and C, the image will be received on this image receptor and the image will be formed there. But then problem is that all these objects are moving from this particular point and they are all getting registered on this point only. But they are obviously not present in the same place. If we don't move the receptor from this point, all their images will be registered at particular one point only. So rather than this objects appearing separately, we'll be seeing their images overlapped on each other. So to solve this, along with the rotation of the disc, what we can do is we can move the image receptor also in the same direction as the rotation of the disc is taking place. So if the disc is moving like this, the receptor also will start moving and all the objects A, B and C will be registered on this image receptor. So if the X-ray source will emit the X-rays, it will pass through the center of rotation and it will reach object A. It will get attenuated at object A and then it will reach the image receptor. So at this point, image of A will be formed. Now we know that the disc is rotating at the same time the image receptor is also moving in the same direction. So when the disc rotates and the image receptor also moves ahead, now the point B, this point B or the object B will be registered on the film and here object B's image will be formed. Same way, image for object C is also formed here. So this images that we are getting of A, B and C. So because the disc is rotating in the same direction as the image receptor, all the images are that are formed are sharp and clear. One more thing is because it is moving, now they will not be overlapped. So the spatial relationship that we are getting of the shadows of A, B and C, it is correct and same as the actual relationship of the objects. And because the source to receptor distance is constant throughout the rotation and the object to receptor distance is also constant throughout the rotation. All the objects will be magnified equally. The average magnification on a panoramic image is somewhere 12 percent. Okay. And then what about these objects D, E and F? They are also passing through the X-rays. So what happens with them is if you see uh, properly this objects D and F this D, E and F are moving in opposite direction as compared to this image receptor and they are on the opposite side of the disc that is they are present between the center of rotation and the X-ray. So because these objects are moving in opposite direction and because they are between the center of rotation and the X-rays their shadows will be reversed on the receptor. The reason for the shadow being reversed is the movement being in reverse direction and this images also will be magnified and they will be magnified so much that they will not be visible clearly itself. The only clear images we will be getting 
are A, B and C. This D, E and F, their uh, appearance will be in reverse direction and so magnified that they will not be visible only. Right? This is the basic, the like you can say simplest concept of panoramic imaging. Now, what is next? We know that we are using this particular principle for taking radiograph of a human. Here in the previous uh, example, we saw that this disc is moving in clockwise direction and we are able to get the radiograph. But if you want to take radiograph of a patient, in that case, you cannot keep on moving the patient for every time you want to take the radiograph. So to solve that, what we can do is we can move the X-ray source instead. So you can move the X-ray source in this direction so that the X-ray is passing through these objects A, B and C. If the objects pass through this A, B and C, obviously we will need to rotate this particular image receptor also. So at the same point when the X-ray source is moving, we want rotation of the image receptor as well. So when the X-ray source and image receptors move together, we are getting images of A, next we will get image of B and then we will get image of C in this manner. In all three of this, what you can notice is presence or the position of the collimator over here. The collimator does not stay at the same point. Along with the image receptor, the collimator position also has to change. So if the collimator for point A is here, for point B it has to come down and for point C it has to come down even more. Okay, So that is how here the, there is rotation of the X-ray source also, there is rotation of the image receptor also and there is also rotation of this particular collimator. So that is how the rotation of the X-ray source and the image receptor together will form the image that is same as the, the spatial resolution and the sharpness is equivalent to the actual objects being imaged. Okay. So now this is the main principle how the image is formed. Now instead of this disc which is having the objects A, B, C, D, E, F, you can imagine mandible. And same way as we are rotating this X-ray source along with that, so we can rotate the X-ray source and the image receptor. So same as we had seen in the previous example, images of point A, point B and point C will be formed. Right? So we are getting clear image of objects A, B and C and the objects D, E and F, they will be magnified and be present in the reverse order as we have discussed already. Right. Now, this is uh, this will be helpful to you for understanding how this rotation is taking place. But the actual, the contemporary panoramic machines that we are using now, they don't have a fixed center of rotation. Rather than that, they have continuously moving center of rotation. That is, this are the this arc shape that is formed is the continuously moving center of rotation for this particular machine. So as for example, from this side, you are trying to imagine this, uh, you are trying to re uh, take radiograph of this side of the <coughs> mandible. Now remember, when you are trying to, uh, when we are uh, taking radiograph of the or uh, of the mandible or any uh, object, for example, in the panoramic machine, the radiograph will be taken from the opposite side. Okay, or you can say the X-rays will pass through the object from the lingual side when we are talking about mandible. They will not be crossing from uh, from buccal side. If you if you want to take radiograph of this side, the X-rays will enter to this mandible from the lingual side. Now, because we have multiple center of rotation, the rotation center moves anteriorly along the arc. Let's say we are we are starting taking radiograph from this side and will move in this direction. So, for taking radiograph on this side, the mandible will start from here, the, uh, the X-ray source will start from here and then it will move anteriorly along the arc. So these are multiple rotation centers we got. So first, this first end of or the half of the arc, it will end just lingual to the symphysis when the midline is imagined. Then the arc is reversed. So from here it was going like this, now it will go posteriorly and the other part of the jaws will also be imagined this way. Right? So if you see all this rotation all together, this is how you will be able to see the rotation taking place. Now you see the rotation of the X-ray source that is taking place here. Simultaneously, keep
keep an eye on this area where you will be able to see that how the image is formed as the x-ray source moves along the mandible so as you can see here as this will move through the mandible you'll be able to see areas of the mandible or areas of the jaw that is being imaged in this area let's see it again so as it passes along the areas we'll be able to see the image layer this image layer is known as focal trough so if the the area through which this x rays are passing and we are getting this clear image that area is focal trough or image layer so this moving source and the receptor the source is here in the receptor they generate a zone of sharpness that is known as focal trough or image layer the closer an anatomical structure is positioned to this focal trough the more clear the image of that particular radiograph so if the object is present within the focal trough will get a sharp and clear image if it is outside you will not be getting any clear image so this focal trough or the image layer is a wide three dimensional curved zone where the structures positioned within this zones uh, they are reasonably well defined in the panoramic image so we can see that uh, let's say for example only mandible if we take about mandible so this is the focal trough of mandible so all the objects present in this area will have will having uh, like will be having a clear image for, for them in this radiograph as we can see now in radiograph that is in the panoramic radiograph we have three type of images these images are real image double image and ghost image depending on where does the structure being imaged lies in the rotation of the x ray source and the receptor first let's see real images so all the objects that lie between the center of rotation and the receptor they form the real image so if this side is being radiographed so when the source is moving in this direction all the objects present within this area they'll form the real image and when the rotation will uh, be shifted to the other side at that point the area between the center of rotation and this particular image receptor they also will be giving us real image so within this zone the objects that lie within the focal trough particularly they cast relatively sharp images whereas the images of the objects which are although they are present between the center of rotation and the image receptor but if they are outside the focal trough their image will be blurred okay so here you can see that at this particular point this ramus is being radiographed and here it lies between the center of rotation and the image receptor so because of that reason this area of the ramus and body is appearing sharp on the image the formation of the real image is also there for the hyoid bone and the cervical spine in the center region but because these structures are away from the center that is center of rotation the focal uh, of the end of the focal trough the image will be blurred and magnified it won't be clear so all the areas present in this highlighted zone that is full of the mandible and the areas the that is floor of mouth the hyoid bone and part of the cervical spine all of them are casting real images but this areas hyoid and cervical spine because they are present outside the actual focal trough that we had seen previously they will not be forming a clear image their image will be blurred next are double images what are double image double image means an object will be visible on the particular radiograph at two spots which are this uh, structure that form double images so all the objects that lie posterior to center of rotation so we know the arc of rotation that uh, in the previous uh, discussion we have seen so this arc of rotation is there so all the objects that lie posterior to it that lie behind it all those objects will form the double image so as you can see this is the arc of rotation so the structures that are lying posterior to it that is the hyoid bone and the vertebrae they form double images so in this radiograph you can see this is the radiograph of or the image of vertebrae that is present here the spine this is double image of the hyoid bone same way the pharyngeal airway this shadow that you are seeing is the pharyngeal airway and the epiglottis all of them they are forming double images right and the next one is ghost image so some of the objects 
so we had seen the actual or the real images the one that is present between the center of rotation and the image receptor the ghost images are uh, the one that are present between the center of rotation and the x ray source so on the panoramic image the ghost images appear on the opposite side of the true anatomical structure so we know that when the x ray source is moving from this side at that point if it is moving from this side that means it is taking radiograph of this ramus for example but at the same time this ramus is also being passed through by the x rays so the area of this ramus although it will appear as ghost image but it will be present on the opposite side so if this is left ramus the ghost image of the left ramus will be present on the right side and it will be present somewhat superior direction so this white shadow you are seeing is the shadow of body and ramus of opposite side body and ramus that is the ghost image and why it is present superiorly because the direction of the x rays in panoramic image they are chordocranial that means they are going from down to top so because it is going down to top this shadow will go to this area okay so and if the objects because they are outside the focal plane and close to x-ray source their image is blurred and significantly magnified also so here you can see ramus being superimposed over opposite side of the image also the hyoid bone and the cervical spine they also form the ghost image when the anterior region are being imaged so when you are taking this area the radiograph of this area at that point uh, sorry when the x-ray is moving from this side this will be the area being imaged at that point there this hyoid bone and the vertebrae will be present between the center of rotation and the x-ray source so all this area this shadowed area they'll create ghost images other foreign bodies for example we know that while taking the panoramic image we have to ask the patient to remove all the metallic accessories in this image you can see this patient has not removed the earring so because this earring is not removed and it is present in the area where the chance where the ghost image is usually formed so the ghost image of this particular earring is formed on this side that is on the opposite side and higher layer okay so the metallic accessories they form the ghost layers ghost images of the hard palate this shadow you are seeing is the ghost image of the hard palate on this side and the mandibular body and angle are also clearly visualized on a panoramic image okay this were about the real double and ghost images now let's see about the image distortions in opg image distortion in the opg can be in the horizontal manner that is horizontal magnification or vertical magnification the horizontal magnification or minification that means increase or decrease in size in the horizontal direction can be due to two reasons either due to anterior posterior positioning or due to rotated mid sagittal plane so to understand this thing that how does it causes uh, like how does it cause the magnification let's see an example so this is the mandible for which we are supposed to take radiograph and these are three objects x y and z now imagine this thing that x or this somewhere here is the center of rotation and this is the focal trough or the area that is the actual place where the image is formed when this x ray source will rotate when it will move through these objects what you can notice is the time taken for this x ray source to pass through object x it is lesser than the time taken for the x ray source to pass through y because y is closer to center of rotation the x ray source passing through it will be slower whereas the x ray source passing through z will be faster so if we talk with example if the x ray source or sorry the x ray passing through the x object if it takes 1 second the x ray to pass through y it will take 2 seconds it is not necessarily double but here it is for example only so for y it will take more time and for z it will take lesser time than the x ray to pass through the x object the reason is that if the far you go from the center of rotation it will be the speed of the rotation will be faster whereas the closer you come to the center of rotation speed of the rotation will be slower so x y and z that is there now along with this even the image receptor is moving the image receptor is moving at its particular 
speed uh, along with the x resource right now this image receptor is set such a way that it will move at the speed to give or give us the clear image of x that is the objects that are present within the focal trough the image receptor will move in a speed such a way that the speed of x rays passing through x will be same as the speed of the image receptor so we'll be getting image of x as a normal image so this is how we are getting normal image now because the x rays are taking longer time to pass through y so more of the y uh, area will like it will take more time to pass through it and hence the image that we will get will be stretched horizontally okay so that is called as horizontal magnification and because the x rays are passing very fast through z it will form a horizontal minification that means it will be you can say uh, the dimension horizontally for the object z will be decreased okay now let's see this thing with the example in mandible let's say this is our mandible on which here we have kept a metallic ring and then we are taking radiograph now what we have to understand over here is that in this particular example that we are talking about the mandible is present in the line of x that is present within the focal trough and if it is present within the focal trough we'll get even magnification of the ring and the anterior teeth so if it is even we'll be getting a normal image if the mandible is pushed posteriorly so now mandible goes to posterior position somewhere around 5 mm in this case the mandible is present in the position of object y and we know that object y because it is taking more time to pass through it or it is moving uh, another way you can explain this is that at this particular point the x ray source is moving through y slowly as compared to the x ray source that is moving through the image receptor for this reason we know that the object lying lingual to or posterior to the focal trough will be horizontally magnified so we have horizontal magnification of the objects when the mandible is present 5 mm posterior to the center of focal trough same way if we are pushing the mandible anteriorly in that case the mandible has come or the anterior teeth and this metallic ring they have come in the position of object z and now because object z we know what it will happen there will be horizontal distortion resulting in narrowing of the object so we'll be getting narrowed anterior teeth and narrowed metallic ring appearance okay these are the example where the antero posterior positioning of the mandible will cause distortion of the image either it can cause horizontal magnification that means stretching of the image or narrowing of the image another way this horizontal magnification can take place is when the mid sagittal plane is rotated so here you can see that the mid sagittal plane let's say this is the mandible of the patient and this is patient's right side and this is patient's left side here you can see r and l mentioned now if you ask the patient to look on the right side that means patient's mid sagittal plane is rotated to right side and when patient's mid sagittal plane is rotated to right side in that case although the mandible will move this side but this posterior part will move in this direction and if it moves in this direction this is the x ray source and this is the image receptor now if this particular posterior part is moving away from the receptor okay so this posterior structure on the side to which the patient's head is rotated are magnified in horizontal dimension because they are moving away from the receptor this is same as what we have seen here that object y over here is away from the receptor as compared to object z so because this particular posterior side of the patient's head which is this side this is side towards which patient has rotated his head so because the patient has rotated the head this side will go away from the receptor and as a result this posterior side of the patient's head or patient's opg image will show horizontal magnification 
same way what happens is when the patient has rotated this side obviously x-ray is not going to be taken for this side also only this x-ray will come this side also at, at that particular point now when x-ray is being taken from this side this side of the patient's the left side of the patient's face it has come closer to image receptor that is equal to the point z that we had seen we had seen objects x objects y and object z where the y was closer to the center of rotation but away from the image receptor but z was closer to image receptor here this side has become z and what we remember is for z the there was narrowing of the image so the objects that are present on the side away from which patient has rotated the head they will show narrowing of the image so this you can understand from this when the radiograph is being taken for the side towards which patient has rotated the head that means the side from which the mandible has gone away the posterior part has gone away there will be horizontal magnification of that part right and when you are taking radiograph from the for like when the radiograph is being taken for the side which is which has gone closer to the receptor we'll see narrowing of the image so you'll be uh, seeing unequal distortion of the face on which on this side you are able to see stretching of the teeth whereas here there are narrowing of the teeth you'll also see overlap overlapping of the premolars also right and the vertical magnification is same we know that the closer the object uh, is there to this uh, particular receptor lesser will be magnification and the far it goes more will be magnification but the vertical magnification is controlled in the panoramic units because the distance is maintained constantly throughout the exposure cycle so this is not very much important in case of the panoramic radiographs now we'll see the influence of spatial relationships when you are uh, interpreting a panoramic radiograph the orientation of the panoramic x-ray beam we have seen in the opg is cordocranial that means it is going from the downside to top side okay now let's imagine that you are taking a sagittal section of this particular mandible this is a sagittal section and on this sagittal section we have three objects x y and z now we know that the direction of the rate the x rays coming from the x ray source and reaching the image receptor is cordocranial that is from down to top this is the lingual side from lingual side the x rays are going and on the buccal side we have the image receptor that is rotating both the source and image receptors they are rotating now when the x rays pass through object x they'll go and create the image over this point right and we know the x rays are diverging from this particular point so the x ray the that will pass through y will go and form the image on this particular point and the x rays passing through z will go and form the image on this particular point so what we can notice that the structures that are positioned closer to the source they are projected higher and the objects that are positioned away from the source that position will be lower okay so depending on where the inferior now is if it is present lingually we might see it present at the top and if it is present buccally we might see it being present at a bottom so this uh, this is what will create confusion if you know this fact you can either way either you can get confused whether the position that we have got from the radiograph is clear or not also you know that this is not the 100% correct position so you also have to check with the other exposers uh, or you can use cbct to know the exact position okay so that is how this can be asked you in exam also that three objects x y and z are there that are present from lingual to buccal direction out of them which of the following will be present at the top or which of the following will be present at the bottom so you can answer the one that is present on the lingual side will be present on the top in the radiographic image the one on the z that is one is on the buccal side will be present on the bottom this is very important uh, from the exam point of view also now next we'll see how is patient's positioning while taking radiograph also affects the occlusal line that you see or the in general uh, radiographic shape that you see in the image ideally you should position the patient such a way 
that the line from tragus to outer canthus of the eye they should be this ala tragus line should be uh, parallel to the floor uh, okay so uh, usually you get all this laser lights in the panoramic machine with which you will be able to position the patient correctly now if the chin is tip too high let's see this is the patient usually if this is the patient's face this is how normal occlusion will be okay this is normal occlusion but if you are trying to tip the patient's chin too high than the normal then this line that we had got it will get either it can get flat or it can also get inverted because the x-rays are not uh, passing through a normal positioning for which the machine has been programmed so rather than the image being occlusion being flat or normal curve will get a reverse occlusion curve in this case we will also see presence of radio opaque shadows of hard pellet on the maxillary teeth they will get superimposed so that will also obscure the vision right now another thing uh, that can happen is if the chin is tipped too low in the previous we had seen it was tipped too high but instead of this if the chin is tipped too low then you will get exaggerated smile curve as you can see here because it is tipped in this direction so this exaggerated smile line will be seen and you will also see teeth being severely overlapped in this area also the symphysal region or the symphysis region and the mental region of the mandible will be cut off it might not be present in the image both the mandibular condyles they may be projected off the superior edge edge of the film so this they may reach up to this higher point also because of this positioning error okay what are the indications for opg or the panoramic image usually we can use it for overall evaluation of the dentition for examining the intraosseous pathologies like cyst tumor or infections for gross evaluation of the tm joints for evaluation of the impacted teeth for evaluation of the presence and eruption of the permanent teeth in case of trauma and in case of developmental disturbances of the maxillofacial skeleton even for survey before taking implant uh, cbct we can al also take this opg what is the advantage of uh, oral uh, this opg as compared to full mouth radiograph now this full mouth radiograph we have discussed in details in the chapter on the video lecture that is there on the intraoral radiography accord this as compared to that what are the advantages of the opg first is that there is broad coverage of the facial bones along with the teeth the radiation dose if you take only opg as compared to full mouth radiograph the radiation dose for the opg is less there is ease of panoramic radiographic technique like you don't have to uh, take multiple radiographs it can be used in patient with trismus also when the patient cannot open the mouth it is quick and convenient radiographic technique and there are useful visual aids that has been given along with the software which can help in patient education also and for the case presentation also and then what are disadvantages of this opg as compared to full mouth radiograph first and foremost is the resolution resolution of the intraoral periapical radiographs is best as compared to extra oral radiographs so the resolution is low here so it do not provide fine details there is magnification across the image which is unequal so it makes the linear measurement unreliable you cannot use the opg measurements for making an implant for example it is not reliable the image is superimposed so we will get real images also double images also and ghost images also so it requires careful visualization to decipher the anatomic and the pathological details so it will require the experience also and it requires accurate patient positioning to avoid the positioning errors also it is difficult to image both the jaws together for example in the case of pagets disease or fibrous dysplasia or any other cases uh, what we have to do is when there are discrepancies of the jaw we have to try and position the patient's jaw in the focal trough now if the maxilla and mandible are not in the harmony if they are not in the same level then in the same image you cannot take or you will not be able to get proper image of maxilla and mandible both okay so that is another problem with the opg okay so that's all from this lecture
If you have any doubts, feel free to post in the comment section. All the best. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates.